It's another lovely Monday morning. This is the Tracker. I'm Fentio Tahiru Fentio. Today, the conversation uh, is quite heavy. We're talking about three things. One, the Ghana under 23, they are off to Egypt where they'll be hoping to book a ticket to Tokyo 2020. The football competition is a place Ghana is not qualified for the Olympics since 2004. So can Ibrahim Tanko and his last do it this time round? We'll be taking a look at their squad ahead of that competition. Also, the Black Stars, they are in action next week in an AFCON 2021 qualifier. Two matches against South Africa and San Tomi and Principe. We see up here his name, his squad. It's got a lot of people talking. We'll look at what the missed chances are, who deserve to be there, who doesn't, and what opportunities some of the newly invited players, seven of them, uh, will stand to take advantage of going into those two games. And then we wrap up the conversation with Kumasi Asante Kotoko. They have failed to make the group stages of the CAF Confederation Cup. Uh, what's the future like for their head coach, Jetel Zakaria Singh? Is that future, does it include him? Does it not include him? Uh, we'll take a very short break when we come back. And if there's any man who believes in, in himself so much, it's my guest today, Muftar Nabila. Thank you very much a pleasure to uh, be here for here joining too. us here on the track. Uh, it's a very long conversation today. And the conversation, of course, is also very interactive on social media as well. You can send in your thoughts on 0550-585-832 on WhatsApp, 0550-585-832. And you can also... Uh, join the conversation by tweeting at me at Fentio underscore or just with the hashtag, the tracker. Mufsal, thanks very much again for joining us. We'll begin the conversation uh, from the Ghana under-23 squad, and they're off to Egypt today. Yes. Um, Ibrahim Tanko named his final squad a few days ago. They played some friendly matches. So we'll begin by taking a look at that Ghana under-23 squad ahead of the AFCON. And there you have it. Uh, goalkeepers Kwame Ba, Richmond Ai, and Ibrahim Dalat. Uh, the defenders are Kinsley Fobi, Edward Sapong, Emmanuel Kujo, Fuseni Zakaria, uh, William Intori, Dan Chi, um, Mohamed Habib, and Robin Pole. Midfielders Evans Oseusu, Simon Zibo, Nurdin Abdulaziz, Emmanuel Adekwe Lomote, Yao Yeboa, the captain, Evans Mensa, Michael Agbeponu from Dreams FC, and the forwards. Frank Aheng, Kwabuna Ousu, Rapapa Mensa. Rapapa Mensa and Kwabuna Ousu, of course, yet to join up with the squad. Samuel Obing Jabba, the other player completing the squad. Ghana are in a very difficult group alongside the host Egypt. They are also in there with Cameroon, who they play in their first game on Friday. And they will also be taking on Mali, who have been beating Ghana for fun in uh, <laughs> age and the age competitions. I'm going to tell I mean... You've followed this team very closely yeah. during camping and all of that. What do you make of the final squad? Well, um, just as you mentioned, there are so many new names in there. The likes of Samuel Obin Jabba, the likes of Emmanuel Adukwil Lamute, Evans Mensa. These are players who were not part of the qualifying series. Um, they all had to come in into the picture because uh, most of the players, the likes of Joseph Pencil, Majida Shumeru, Isaac Chu, Menko, their clubs refused to release them. So um, the coaches needed to look for alternatives and they went in for these players. But I do think that when I was speaking to Ibrahim Tanko, what he said was that in as much as it is very difficult for him to blend these players together within the shortest possible time, uh, he believes that with time they will, they will get that chemistry before they kick off in their opening game against Cameroon. I, I think that we all saw Evans Mensa in the local scene before he left the stage. With the and yes, with the Interallies. And even let's not forget, Evan Grant gave him a call up to the Black yeah. Stars. And then we all knew the kind of player uh, Emmanuel Lomote is when he was with the Dreams FC. When they came into the Premier League in 2016, when they went back to Division 1 in 2017, he was instrumental for them. Yeah. And then we know someone like um, Samuel Oben, very important. Very, very talented player. And then Michael Agbokono. These are players, when you look at them, you you would say that, yeah, we've still got a quality to go and do our best in the tournament. But um, one would always say that when you start with a group of players, and especially technical players, technical coaches, they will tell you that um, you don't change a winning team. And when they had a winning team that brought them to this stage, it's actually very disappointing that they were going to the tournament without those key players. I mean, how important uh, with... 
I mean, how crucial would the absence of some of those players be in this team's quest? Because we've seen uh, the likes of Joseph Pencil, Isaac Chum, Majid Ashimero, Gideon Mensah. Yes. These four players were all a crucial part of the qualifying series. They were the same guys who went to Algeria and beat Algeria to yeah. qualify. They will not be at the under 23, not because the coach doesn't want them there, but because it is not a tournament recognized by FIFA. The clubs, there are various clubs in Europe, are not obligated to release them. Release so them. it's going to the competition without those players. And the other, the, the other striker, the, the Muslim boy, I forgot his name, another um, really good Bukhari player. Zaka Bukhari Zakari. Bukhari Zakari, also not going to the competition. I mean, that must be tough for Ibrahim Tanko. Well, it's actually very tough. And, and anyone in his shoes will accept that it's really, really tough. Yeah. Apart from Isaac Chum, uh, who was coming off the, from the bench, and even when we went to Algeria, he was that key man in the heart of our, def uh, our midfield, um, allowing um, Yao Yebua the freedom to roam yeah. in the attacking area. So for him not to have his services, actually, it's actually a very huge blow. You always knew someone like Joseph Pencil, instrumental on the flanks. Anytime you had someone like Majida Shimero um, in front of the anchor men of that midfield, you know that his vision for passes alone is enough to split any opponent for you. Yeah. So for the technical team, uh, or Ibrahim Tranko and his charges, uh, Michael Osei and Co. not to have them, it's actually a very huge blow. But one thing is also clear. Most of these players who are not part, it's an opportunity for them to announce themselves that we had the quality to be part of that team, yeah. though you overlooked us for the qualifiers. So I do think that, and let's not also forget about one person, Bernard Tekpete. He was also ben a Tekpete key Tekpete player as well. in that. In, Absolutely. In that, a key so player in that. makes five. And then when we started the qualifiers, we had this Benjamin Tete. All these were players who were part of the qualifying series. Now we are in the main tournament and they are not there. But the question is, will Ibrahim Tanko um, be able to put them together? I do think he's got what it takes to put them together. The players arrived three days. Um, he was training with them. They are leaving Ghana today. When they get there, they will have um, three or four days to train before they open their campaign on Friday against Cameroon. Uh, I think that these are training sessions he'll be looking at to say that, OK, let me put together my team. One good news, too, is, is that we have Simon Zibo back in the heart of that uh, midfield. So After he got the red miss card, Isaac Chum that much. so we might not miss Isaac Chum that much. But and let's not also forget someone like Majida Shimero, um, in his absence in the first game against uh, um, the last Togo. game against Algeria. No, as well. the first yeah. game against Togo, he was not there. He was available for the second leg in Togo. The first leg against Gabon, he was not there. The second leg, he was not around because of injury. Yeah. The first leg at the Accra Sports Stadium, when we played Algeria. He was around, but due to uh, yellow cards, he was not available. And he played for, that game. Yeah, and he then played didn't that game. Play away from he home. didn't play the, 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 the away from home. And we had players who were able to step in. So you can always trust Ibrahim Tanko to look for alternatives when the key players are not available. And his tone has not changed. He believes he'd got quality, what it takes to qualify. Yeah. Even if he's not winning the tournament, he wants to be part of one of the three countries that are representing the continent in Tokyo 2020. And those three countries will be the top three. So the two finalists and also the third, the third place team. team, they will book their places to uh, Japan in August of next year. Now, the team had a final preparatory game against Shooting Stars FC. It was a friendly match. They won by two goals to nil. Uh, we'll uh, try and take a look at some of the highlights of that particular match. And, you know, we talk about having preparatory games and how crucial it is. Do you yeah. think that this team has had like very satisfactory preparations? Well, um, most of the players who were part of the preparation sessions uh, were locally based players. And just like we've always had them, we always get them um, when um, we always get the foreign based players when they were like three, four, five days yeah. to the game itself because FIFA says that you need to, uh, you can give them two weeks, three weeks to be part. 
But I do think that uh, per what I saw, um, especially on Saturday when I was at their friendly match against uh, Shooting Stars, he and, started... Uh, you mentioned it. There you have the highlights of that game. That's yes. the first goal yes. from the black mate. Just beautifully uh, Samuel worked. Oben. Samuel Oben there. Yeah. Uh, he opened the scoring in, in that game. Uh, beautifully worked. Catch off an assist from Evans Mensah. Uh, yeah. And then uh, the second goal to understand was Samuel Sam Oben. I didn't know he was the one wearing the number 18 jersey. So he scored both goals for yeah. the black mate against shooting stars. Friendly matches are vital in as much as we cannot compare friendly matches to competitive matches. But friendly matches will give you an idea of the things you are doing right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So I do think that most of the friendly matches Ibrahim Tanko has played has given him an idea about the quality of his players, the flaws of his players, where to build, where to improve, where to uh, know that he needs to strengthen more further because I know that yeah. this this is uh, my area. When I exploit this area, then I have an edge over my opponent. So I do think that he's seen a lot. Um, the last friendly match was against Shooting Stars. I'm not sure they're going to have any until they open the, the tournament against Cameroon. Yeah. But l like I mentioned earlier... That's Brand the second goal yeah. that went in there. Yes, Another yeah. really beautiful shot. I mean, uh, Muftal, you, you look at this under 23 team. And the pressure on them is massive. It's huge because Ghana obviously has never qualified for the Olympics yes. in the football competition since 2004. Oh. It's been very the capital years. of that team. And the pressure <laughs> is, yeah. And the pressure is on. It's a pleasure I mean, to let's talk about interview to see if you on this. Yeah. <laughs> Chipsa and Co were still playing. Yes. Steven Apia, Suleiman Tari, they were all at that competition. Yeah, They've all now retired. And we still Chipsa, haven't made it Chipsa to the Chipsa actually captained that team. He did. And then Otia Kintin was the man who led them to, to that tournament. You yeah. see? At this point, we are looking at a country that is staffing for football, a country that had staffed to be part of the Olympic competition since 2004. So um, you look at someone like Ibrahim Tanko wanting to make history. That is why mm. in every single game or training session or friendly match, you have Otia Kenten around. That is why you always have him stand on his feet and shout at the players and make sure he gets the message across to them. You all know the responsibility on us. Yeah. We need to change the narrative. The last time we were there, 15 years, if my mathematics is right, yeah. 15 years, most of them were, were still extremely young. Yeah. Let's say you were five, six years, or seven years. They probably maximum. didn't watch that competition. They, they probably would, <laughs> they didn't even watch that competition. Yeah. So this is an opportunity for them to rewrite history for themselves. And it is also an opportunity for most of these players to market themselves to the world. Let's not forget. The Olympic tournament is going to be a huge platform for most of these players. Absolutely. Especially if you look at most of the locally based players. The likes of uh, this boy from Brooklyn Chelsea, Zachary. Zachary of Zachary Fantastic Michael Agbekono of Dreams FC. These are players who know that Richmond, Aye, Kwame Ba, Ibrahim Danlan, if they got the opportunity to be in post, this is an opportunity for them to market themselves to the world. Yeah. So they also have that responsibility. And then come that responsibility of supporters because these players, um, uh, should I say that these players don't want to be put in the category of those who have come to pass. And we've described yeah. them as perpetual failures when they, they come also to run pass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Talk about responsibility. Uh, here's the head coach of the Ghana the 23 team, the Black Matures. His name is Ibrahim Tanko. And he said exactly what Muftar was saying, that the players don't need any external motivation. They know and recognize the responsibility on their shoulders. I mean, we have only one mindset. I mean, we are going to a tournament uh, which we want to qualify to Olympics. And so the players know what uh, is ahead of us. We, the technical team, also know what is ahead of us. So, I mean, we are ready. As I said, we finished our last training. We are going there. We, have, we still have three to four days to polish our training that we did. At the end of the day, we are going to have a very good... In tournaments, you have to win every game you, if you want to win the tournament or you want to qualify. So, this... so that's Ibrahim Tanko there. Um, obviously, uh, saying that the players recognize the responsibility on their shoulders. Uh, here's the captain of the team as well, Ia Yeboah, who also spoke after uh, that friendly match against Shooting Stars. And he is counting on the support of Ghanaians to make it to Tokyo. Yeah, so far so good. I think uh, we played really well today. And that uh, you can see that it's still, we are still in the pre uh, preparation. And then uh, this game is giving us a lot of confidence. We won and then we played so well. 
the coaches are happy with our performance and of course with the boys they are also happy with our own performance as well. Yeah, so far it's been, uh, it's been good. I think uh, we will need more support from everybody in Ghana and then uh, for us to go to Egypt and make things better because Ghanaians expect a lot from us and then uh, the same thing we also want to get to the top. So if we get the support that we need from everybody. So yeah, yeah boy. Black matches, captain. Those videos, of course, can get to see of Moftao. So thank you very much for that <laughs> uh, as well. Uh, but so they've already done one impossible thing. They went to Algeria and beat the Algerians away from home to qualify for the competition when no one gave them a chance. Uh, going to the um, Afcon under 23 tournament, not many people are giving them a chance. So just maybe Ibrahim Janko and his words uh, can spring another surprise and qualify for Tokyo 2020. Ghana's first game is against Cameroon on Friday. After that, they will play the host Egypt and then they will play Mali as well. But before you we go for a break, can I just say something brief? Yeah. Um, Ibrahim Tango is here to lose a game in the second half. Of any of the qualifiers? Of all the qualifiers. Yeah. Against Togo, he was losing in the first half. Second half, he came back and scored five. Yeah. Against uh, Gabon, we were leading 2 0. Second half, he scored two. Yeah. Against um, Gabon, away from home, he drew. Against Algeria, away from, uh, at home, we were losing 1 0 in the first half. Second half, he came and he equalized. Mm. And the one we went away, first half, he ended 0 0. And then, second half, he scored 1 to win. So. Ah. <laughs> That's it. Interesting <laughs> statistic. So, uh, all the best to Ryan Janko and his uh, and his players as they take on the rest of Africa, uh, starting on Friday. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we we'll zoom into Black Stars matters. This is a tracker. You're watching the tracker on City TV. Well, let's continue the conversation. This time on another national team, the Black Stars of Ghana. It's a name that really ignites a lot of passion. Whether it's positive or negative, doesn't matter. It does. It gets a lot of people talking. They'll be involved uh, next week in AFCON 2021 qualifiers. Two games, one against South Africa here at home. That game will be played at the Cape Coast Sports Stadium November 14. 14. Yes. November 14. And then a few days later, they will be off to Tommy and Principe in Central Africa to take on that country in a, a second game. Kwesi Apia has named his squad for the competition and it's got a lot of people talking. There you have it. Uh, Richard Ofori, Felix Hanna, Razak Abalora are the goalkeepers. The defenders, Andy Yadom, Harrison Afo, Lumu Agwenyanu, uh, Joseph Aidu, Kasim Nuhu, Nicolas Opoku and Mohamed Salisu. Uh, midfielders, Samuel Owusu, Thomas Partey, Alfred Duncan, Mubarak Wakaso, Idrisu Baba, Christopher Enchia J. And the forwards are Andre Ayu, the captain, Mohamed Kudus, the youngster, Emmanuel Boateng, uh, Jordan Ayu, Tariq Jibrin, and Shafiu. Mumuni. I uh, watched uh, uh, Ria Mayoka's uh, Ijusu yes. in action. Ijusu Baba. Ijusu uh, Baba in action against, against Real Madrid. Uh, yeah, 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 he's a very good player. He's a very good player. Yes. But Mufta, I mean, this is the squad. The obvious. The obvious name that's got a lot of people questioning Kwesi Apia's intentions or reasons is Torek Jibrin <laughs> and how he made it into the squad. And we'll talk about him in detail very shortly. But first of all, what do you make of this particular squad? Somebody in there that shouldn't have been, somebody you think should have been there? I, 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 I struggle to, to often understand some of the colors of Kwesi Apia. He seems to be... Excuse my language, play and play with the Syrian national team. Um, <laughs> every now and then, uh, he's building and rebuilding. Yeah, he will call so many players and release so many players. He hardly gives them the opportunity to play. One big question everyone will be asking is most of these players is giving them an opportunity to join the national team. Would they kick a ball? And that's a, and that's a good point you make because this is, this, is, this is what I would do. He has made seven new call-ups. So seven of the players there are debutants. Take a look at the list. Uh, Tariq Jibril, that's his first time in the Black Stars. Mohamed Kudus, Shafi Mumuni, Idrisi Baba, Christopher NJJ, and Mohamed Salisu, Razak Abalora. All these seven players have never previously had call-ups to the national team ever before. The ultimate question is what you're asking. Will they get to kick a ball? Because Chris Alpia does that a lot, where he invites a lot of new players and doesn't allow them to kick the ball. Now, the next slide you will see 
is Kwesi Apia's 12 players he has chopped off from the AFCON squad. Now, out of the team that he took to the AFCON, 12 of them did not make this particular AFCON squad. And you're thinking all of the absentees from that particular AFCON squad, uh, if all of them deserve not to be called up. You see, if you look at someone like Kwajua Samoa, why would Mary Kwajua Samoa not be part of the senior national team? That's a big question everyone will need to answer. But other man, why is he not part of that team? Yeah. That's a question everyone will need to answer. So sometimes I look at Kwesi Apia's decision. Well, but injured. Okay, yeah, he's injured, and that's understandable. But I look at players like, apart from Christian Echu, when Kwesi Apia brought him to the senior national team, if my memory serves me, somewhere 2012 or 2013, when he came into that team, yeah. he's been consistent with the senior national team. Most of the other players he's invited, we hardly have them play for a national team. What happens to them? Yeah. Why is it that you invite them, you don't give them? You see, he's, he's that kind of a coach who is difficult to try. And if you are a coach who doesn't want to try players, you actually struggle to give the opportunities to play. Mm. You always want to rely on the players who has done it over and over again for you. And if you do that consistently, the more you invite new players, the more we see new players and go, like, oh, this is a very good player you've invited. Someone like Mohamed Kudus, who was part of the 2017 and the 17 World Cup squad. Someone like somewhere... Uh, uh, who could have Idris been Baba. part of the under 23? He, who could have been part of the under 23? Someone like Idris Baba. We know he's very, very good. But would you give him the opportunity? We saw the likes of Alassane Wakaso. <laughs> Why he invited them? Yeah. What, what, be, what became of them? We've seen the likes of Thomas at Japan. What, what has happened to him? He's nowhere to be found. Yeah. So you, 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 you struggle to understand why he will always call up so many players, but he will not give them the opportunities to play. Give them the opportunities to play for us to say, oh, these are very good players. These are not very good players. You've got a technical eye already. Yeah. We can only question your decisions, but we cannot decide who we should play. Right. But if the call-ups are repetitive, you continue to serve all this is in new place, it doesn't change anything. They will come, in a way. But you know Andrea is always going to start. Yeah. You know Thomas Partey is always going to start. Just like the way um, Avram Grab was dealing with Thomas Partey until he exploded in that game against Egypt prior to the 2018 World Cup when mm -hmm. we were playing the qualifiers. This is an opportunity for you to let most of these fringe players play. One sad thing to us, we didn't play friendly matches for Kosia Pia to have access to them. We to know two windows. We had two windows. We didn't take any advantage of either of them. And at this point, it's actually going to be very difficult for one to sit down and say, most of the players we see up here they invite, or most of the players he invited are going to make an impact in the senior national team. You just sit down hoping for anything that will happen. After all, you and I can sit down here mm -hmm. and mention four or five players who are going to start. You know, for will you start. You can probably mention about eight. You know, Lumor will start. <laughs> you know, someone like. Uh, uh, Andre Ayu will Andrea, start. Jordan will start. will start. Jordan will start. Yeah. Wakaso will start. Will start. Wakaso will start. Will start. Yeah. Then you go to the defense. Kasim is going to start. And then he's probably partnering with someone. To yeah, someone Joseph Edu. Joseph Edu or uh, Nicolas Opoku. It's, these are the players. You can always look at it and know that. These are the players who are going to. If Harsinafu is fit, you know Harsinafu is going to play. He I mean, might play ahead, of, ahead of Andy Yadom. It's, it's possible. This is the, 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 the 12 players that did not make it back from the AFCON. Uh, Baba Rahman, he's injured. John Boy has been left out. Caleb Elkuban is injured. Asimwa Jang has been left out. Jonathan Mensah has been left out. Atama has been left out. Atizigi left out. Koja Samoa left out. Efri Aqua left out. Achu injured. Thomas Japan left out. Kwabuna Wusu is with the under-23 team. Now, is this question up here trying to move on here? Because I'm looking at this. Uh, move on. The, and I'm, hold on. <laughs> I'm looking at Asamoa Jan, 35. John Boy, 33. Jonathan Mensah, 30. Atama is young. Uh, the rest of them are young. Christian Achu, 30. Efri Aqua, same. Koja Asamoa, same. Is it because Apia trying to move on? He's not moving it's on. It's one thing I'm thinking, but then I look at the, those called up and I see Harrison Afo, who is 34. 34. 
And you wonder if Kozia is being consistent here. Because initially, my thinking was, okay, he's trying to move on from maybe John Boy, Jonathan Mensah. But you're looking at the squad and you're looking at he's harassing not he's, he's not moving on. He's just... You know, as a coach who has a discretion and has uh, has carved the image for himself that someone who has eyes for talents, always giving us new players every now and then, uh, maybe it's just an opportunity for him to give more players to come into the national team, mm. right? You cannot look at someone like Atama Lawe and you go like, I think Lawe is not old. No, he's he? been playing. He's been, he's he's been, been playing, playing this season. consistently. Yeah. Then you go for someone like, Tariq Jibril, who is older than Atama. Who is older than Atama Lawe? We saw Tariq Jibril play for Accra House of Oak. We all praised his talent. But now Tariq Jibril is getting the opportunity to come to the senior national team for the first time yeah. at the age of 28 or more. So <laughs> what probably influenced that call-up? And you look at the, the career of someone like Tariq Jibril. If my memory serves me right, the last time... Um, he scored a goal. Uh, can I remember when he was uh, in Turkey? Is it Bukas or something? He was. That's uh, that's the that's like the last time he, he actually scored more than two goals in a league game. <laughs> you have to go back to 2010, 2011 season. I was looking at his statistics before coming here. It means nine years or eight years. He has seven goals overall in the league. Seven league goals for Jabril. Torek Jibril, formerly of House of Oak, seven league goals in nine years, playing at the highest level from Turkey to Egypt. And at the age of 28, after he's moved to a club like TP Mazembe in DR Congo, it is now that Kwesi Apia deems him good enough at the age of 28. You see, <laughs> I, I, excuse, me, excuse me for laughing, but, well, not to question Kwesi Apia's decisions to invite uh, someone like Torek Jibril, but the numbers you just mentioned... One would shudder to understand why someone like Tariq Jibril, who is an attacking midfielder, seven goals. In nine years. In nine seven years. Goals. Nine seven league goals. In nine years. We are wondering what. For an attacking midfielder. What special he's bringing on board? What are some of the qualities that Tariq Jibril is bringing on board that if you had brought someone like Kojo or someone. Or maybe, Franka Champo. Or Franka Champo. Who is taking the Chinese league by storm. By storm. Oh, you see, sometimes... Um, or even are... Ashimeru. Isn't Ashimeru like a younger <laughs> version of Jibril? Of Tariq Jibril? Ashimeru has scored even more goals than, <laughs> than Tariq Jibril. You see, uh, thank you. We, sometimes when you speak, people would think that maybe you probably have uh, something against a coach or something. But the point here is, you look at some of their decisions and you go like, this decision... It's not the right decision. Yeah. It's just like what we used to have Edwin Jima follow the Black Stars to AFCON, three or four consecutive AFCONs without kicking a ball in even a single minute. Yeah. But he was consistent. Now we have Kwesi Apia consistent in changing players without giving the opportunities. And he continues to invite players. Let's not forget, prior to Kenya, he invited a certain Asante from... Um, is it Al Jaffa? Yeah, or in, uh, in, in the UAE. In the, UAE. the UAE. Yeah, he played. So he finds a way of always calling up certain players for, to get a media talk in. Who will never them. come back to the national team <laughs> after that one call up? I can guarantee you here, right now, today, market, that Torok Jibril, this would be his last call up to the Black, to the black Stars team. <laughs> Prophet Fetio has spoken. No, it's but... not prophecy. <laughs> if you understand Kwesi Apia and the way he does his call ups, some of these things are predictable. Yes, there are certain players speaking. he's just going to call for one time. Yes. The public, Torok Jibril probably will not kick a ball during these two matches, and he will probably never come back to the national team ever. Not under Kwesi Apia. <laughs> well, I, I, you see, um, I'm also looking at someone like Shafiu Mumuni. Will he give him the opportunity? That guy is letter. When it comes to scoring, create the opportunities for him, and he will score. But will we see appear giving an opportunity even against a site like South Tome and Principe? Yeah. Not to underrate them, but these are the kind of games for you to give opportunity to the free players you invite. You don't need someone like Thomas Partey in a game against our own principal, when you have an equally very good player like Mohamed Kudus in it. Let this guy rest. Jordan, you rest. 
give that opportunity to Kobna Owusu and uh, that's a Kobna Owusu um, Shafi 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 to lead that striking force. Yeah. Give him the opportunity. Now come to the heart of the defense. Give someone like Joseph Edu an opportunity who has played incredibly well for Celta Vigo. But same as Mohamed Salisu. Mohamed Salisu, who is so so good for Real Mallorca, yeah. right? And then you have Idris Baba. He plays for Valladolid. Very, very, very good player. Yeah. Will he give the opportunity when you have the likes of Wakasos in there? The parties in there. So Idrisu plays for Mallorca. And then Salisu uh, plays for Valladolid. Uh, they faced off this weekend. And you see, I could see up here. Okay. May it get well. <laughs> it won't get well. I mean, and let's talk about another player like uh, Harrison Affle, for example. I mean, Kusia Pia has named the squad with just one left back. Yes. Lumor 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 and one right back. In uh, Andy Yadom. In Andy Yadom. And he's named a 34-year-old Harrison Affle as backup for both right back and left back. Because he's versatile. <laughs> because he's versatile. I mean, isn't it time... We moved on from players like Harrison Afu and started to give younger players like Gideon Mensah, for example, Mensa, that, that's, that's an, an opportunity at left back because he's not going to the under 23 Afcon. No, he has an opportunity to be part of this team. The same for Majid Ashimeru. Yeah. He's not going to the under 23 Afcon. He has an opportunity to be part of this team. The same goes for a player like Joseph Pinsel. Not going to the under 23 Afcon. He has an opportunity to be part of this team because the under 23 players. They are the same players that are going to form the core of the Black Stars team in and the next two three years. Why are we not these, trying to integrate them now? Most of these under-23 players can equally play for the senior national team. Most of them. If Ibrahim Tanku, or let me say, even Kwesi Apia himself, decides that he was not going to invite the Andre Ayo, the Thomas Partey, the Mubarak Wakaso, the Lumak Benyanus, and decide to go with the under-23 squad, these were players who are equally good enough to face off against South Africa, to face off against South American Principe. These players, they are the next generation of the senior national team, the Black yeah. Stars. Yeah. So what is the point in not giving youngsters the opportunity to grow into the senior national team when they are the future of the senior national team? Mm. If you're not giving them the opportunity to be part of the team now, how do they garner the experience to be part of the team when you need the most? The integration should start the now. The integration must start now. Yeah. You don't wait for us maybe to fail to qualify and you say, oh, we are building up. We've always been building up. In the tournament, you were there. You were at that press conference where he said even if he's sacked, he knows that he's bringing a team for the future. Yeah. Um, well, come on. It's about time we grow beyond building a team for the future. We you have started to start building winning. effective April 4 when you were appointed April 4, 2007, when you were appointed Black Stars head coach, you started training with the local Black Stars in Prom Prom. There were so many talented players you should have seen who could have been part of your team and be core of that team. Yeah. Someone like Majira Shimeru, these were players you took to Prom Prom. Are you saying that all these years you never saw them? This is Christopher uh, and Chia Jay. Yeah. A great caller. Let him come in. Will he give him the opportunity? Will he, will he, he might get back, and at the end of him, he might never return. I mean, it's, so it's an interesting conversation. The Black Stars have moved their game to the Cape Coast Sports Stadium. Yes. There's a new, uh, there's a new campaign by the FA yeah. called uh, "Bring Back the Love." Bring back the love. And I say this: while it is a great idea for you to try and ignite some passion for the Black Stars, there is no better way of bringing the love to the team than winning. Win, 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 and win some more. The love will naturally come back. The only way that people fell in love with the Black Stars team was when they started winning in qualifying matches ahead of the 2006 World Cup. Before that, they were piss poor. Couldn't qualify for 2004 AFCON. Went to 2002 AFCON, got kicked out in quarterfinal, hosted AFCON in 2000, got kicked out in quarterfinal. So people lost interest. Even went to Egypt, when we went to Egypt and exited the tournament at the group stages, people were so sad about the team. Yeah, as much as we were, we were happy that they've qualified for the World Cup. And like you mentioned, the only way to bring back the support for the national team is to win. And also, at times, to listen to 
the calls of their supporters. In as much as we will always say that we have 30 something million uh, coaches in the country who all claim to know football and understand football and want to make decisions for football, let's not also forget one key thing. One, there are calls, there are calls. When people were against Avram Grant leading the senior national team, when he was fired for a return of Christia Pia, first game against Ethiopia, Baba Yara was packed. Because it was as if that load that was on the team was lifted. And yeah. that person was Avram Grant. People choked the Bawaiya Sports Stadium for a Black Stars game for the first time since 2014. Yeah. So if at this point people have decided to lose interest in activities of the senior national team, it's not the social media campaign that will bring back the laugh. It's winning. If Kwesi Apia is able to win consistently... People who follow the team naturally yeah. will go to the stadium to watch naturally. If the team is doing well, businesses are doing well, more money is coming, people are willing to use that to pay to go and watch. But I cannot afford to pay and go and see them and watch them perform like they did against Uganda when the, game, uh, when the World Cup qualifier was played in Tamale. I cannot afford to watch them against same Uganda like the way they performed in that game uh, at the Bahia Sports Stadium, you need a team capable of performing. Not again, not like the performance we saw against Congo at the Bahia Sports Stadium. We want a performance like the one they gave Congo five. Those ones, people will come. But if every blessed day we say, oh, one of our own, one of our own, one of our own, and one of our own continues to lose, <laughs> oh, you're creating a bigger distance between the team and the supporters, you want them to bring the back, uh, back the love to. Okay, so Chris Apia's job is cut out for him. The FA's job cut out for them as well. Uh, but do make sure that you do head to the Cape Coast Sports Stadium and uh, catch the Black Stars against South Africa there. The South Africans, it's going to be a really tough game because they are picking up themselves. You saw them at the AFCON. They are not pushovers at all. Uh, the other team in Ghana's group, of course, is Sudan. So Ghana, South Africa, Sudan, Satomi and Principe. Uh, slugging out for a place at AFCON 2021. The top two teams will qualify for that competition. Easy peasy. The Black Stars can't miss out on that competition. But let's switch uh, to some people who have been missing out on crucial competitions. <laughs> Kumasi Asante Kotoko, they were in Cote d'Ivoire uh, last weekend, on Sunday, in fact. They took on San Pedro uh, there. The first leg ended... 1-0 in favor of Kumasi Asante Kotoko. And they needed to ensure that they got a decent result in Abidjan to progress into the group stages of the CAF Confederation Cup where they were last season. However, after kickoff, it didn't take long. The very first minute Kotoko conceded. It was that quick and unforgivable, really. And you can see on your screen right now, um, highlights of that particular match. Kotoko in their famous usual red and San Pedro in white uh, there. And it wasn't, you know, not too many people in the stadium, of course. An empty stadium. Yeah, actually. it was virtually an empty stadium. So the Kotoko fans who made the trip there, they, were, they started off by singing and cheering. And soon <laughs> they were silenced. Right after kickoff, San Pedro took the lead and ended up winning by two goals to nil. I mean, Muftal, from a, a Kotoko point of view, this must be very disappointing because, I mean, you can't go from the group stages of the competition uh, from last season to this. So halftime ended 1-0 in favor of San Pedro. Back from recess, Kotoko tried and tried. It couldn't get the equalizer, and San Pedro got the second goal. This must be very heartbreaking for Kotoko fans. But you have to say, from... From the look of look of things, this was always coming. In, include me, include just include me in the Kotoko fans that it's very difficult for them <laughs> to take because I am one. This monumental failure is one that I I, I anticipated. I was supporting the team with my head and not with my heart. Um, that's because, the second goal for yes, San I, Pedro. And, so and they won two one on aggregate. Look at that! Everybody goes ballistic. The celebrations are there. So 2-0, two 2-1 two aggregate winners. They are into see, the group stages of the conference. You see, Kotoko out. this is the second time Kotoko has decided uh, to let go an advantage and lose miserably. Um, in that game against uh, ES Satif, where the Porcupines secured a 2-0 victory in the first leg, 
they went away um, in a game that they had an advantage uh, because ESFT, when they, even when they were leading 2-0, they were down by a man in the last 15 minutes and they still managed to get that third goal. And then they knocked Kotoko out. Jesse Zakaratin told the club that this is not your standard. Now we are looking for our standard. Um, our standard now probably just maybe to be playing the President Cup or the Otunfo Cup and all that because, that, <laughs> because that's basically Somebody what... said once they get knocked out of the President's Cup or whatever, now they, he will say that Kotoko's standard is the Milo games. <laughs> <laughs> no, but on a more serious note, I, I think that uh, this, this club has always found a way of uh, hurting its supporters. Um, if you signed someone like C.K. Akuno within three months, he was in the group stages of the CAF Confederation Cup. He led you to win the NC Special Competition that qualified you to the CAF Champions League. And because of so-called um, promotion to the uh, role of a technical director, yeah. C.K. is very young for him to accept the role of a technical director. Because of that, you bring there's in no someone... There's no adrenaline in that position. There's, there's absolutely nothing. What are you even going to do? You try to bring in someone in the person of Jetsu Zakarasin because Jetsu defeated CK 3 1 in the NC uh, Tier 2 competition in the semi final. It's a joke, in my opinion. Because I felt that Kotoko built up so well. The atmosphere surrounding that team was at its peak. But when they took one step forward, they tried to take three steps backwards in, with that decision to lay off CK Akuno, in as much as most of the rumors we heard about CK Okono not, not speaking to the players well, and the players were always angry at him and reporting. CK Okono himself confessed that he realized that his approach at times was not good and he started to get closer to the boys. Yeah. Apologized to them, spoke to them, and they understood him. And now, because some players felt that the coach was not speaking to them in the right tone, he decided to lay him off and that he was disrespectful to management. Come on. You, you, do you need a resource or you need a yes and master? You need respect. Nobody, see, that, that, and that's the thing. You want a winner. You don't want somebody that will cut to your caprices and whims. And that's what CK refused see, to do and Kotoko sucked it. And then they said that they are sucking CK. You see, and you decided to bring in someone who came... One key thing, because he wanted to buy into the hearts of the supporters, he claimed with this team, he's not sure he's going to lose a single game. And he has lost how many? He's not won an away game. He's not won an away game. He's lost CK, every single CK, one of them. CK Akuno went to Cameroon, defeated Cotton Sport. He took a 2 0 lead against uh, Kanu Pilas and threw it away. And threw it away. What, what, what kind of a coach is that? And you see, you also look at the management of Kumasiya Santokotoko and go like, what were they thinking when they decided to go in and sign as many as 12, 15, 20 players? 19. 19 players. What for? <laughs> oh, they were all coming, play. And you see, there's one key thing Kotoko has failed to realize. Their, their mode of operation is terrible. You can't have signed as many as 19 players to come and join another long list of players who are not going to be in the club for three seasons, if my memory serves me right, one player Kotoko has signed and he's played for three consecutive or four seasons now is Emmanuel Jemfi. Right. When he was signed from War All Stars by Opoku in T's administration, yeah. his first game was against Accra House of Oak when Sergio Tragul was in charge of Accra House of Oak. And we had Michael Ose in charge of Kumasi as Antikoro. He's been only that signing who has been at Kotoko till date. And Augustine Sefa. At right and Augustine back. Sefa. Yeah. The rest, you bring them in, you sack others, you bring more, you sack others, you bring more. You see, if you were spending your own money to pay off players and sign new players, yeah. would you be doing this? The ultimate question, though, should Kotoko sack Zachary Asen? But that shouldn't be a conversation. I was even saying that they should sack him before they, f they fly back to Ghana. Because, <laughs> trust me, I think that Jethro Zakarasen has failed woefully. He's, he's been one classical example of a failure. Yeah. If you look at someone who can rattle 
before the supporters and say, with this quality of players, he's not sure he's going to lose one match and he decides to lose. Let's not forget, we had a certain Goran Stevanovic, prior to 2012 AFCON, yeah. who came telling us how the team was good and how he was going to win AFCON 2012. When we went and lost and came back, Christian Chris Tetchi fired him. We didn't even need to have it, an extra conversation. Yeah. After that press conference, Kwesi Apia, uh, Nyan Teche fired him and gave the job to Kwesi Apia. Yeah. That's how Kwesi Apia came into the senior national team. This is the point. He promised that he was going to lead Kumasi Asante Kotoko to a group stage of the Cast Champions League. He failed. The contract says he needed to take you to a group stage of the CAF, uh, uh, Champions League. If he fails, he should take you to a group stage of the CAF Confederation Cup. He failed. You needed him to do this within three years. Within the first four, five months, six months, he has failed. Fire him. What else? Get a new coach who will come in and prepare the team yeah. for a new season. If there's going to be a Ghana Premier League anytime soon, even if there isn't going to be one anytime soon, they should fire him, get someone to be training the boys like CK Akuno was doing before the club decided to participate in the CAF Confederation Cup, where he magically took them to the group stages. Okay, so we'll start with some very strong thoughts. Here's my two piece on Kumasi Asante Kotokoa. I think the coach is not the only problem. The biggest problem is the management level. And I think this whole idea of always seeding management of a team to a certain rich entrepreneur to take care of is not helping Kumasi Asante Kotoko in any way. Those sort of individual decisions is what is costing the club now. What needs to happen it's a huge managerial overhaul. The structure of the club needs to change. Everything needs to change. Just changing coaches alone is not going to help Kumasi Asante Kotoko. The people running the club, they need to change. Right now, it looks like only amateurs are running Kumasi Asante Kotoko. And the club deserves much, much better than that. Anyway, that's how we wrap up today's conversation on the Shaka. Thank you very much, Muftar Nabila. Pleasure to be here. Guest. Uh, for you that also tune in from wherever, thank you very much uh, for tuning in as well. Do join us again next Monday at 10.30 a.m. here on City TV. My name is Fencho Tahir Fencho. Do enjoy the rest of your week.